Atrium Fragrance is our brand that's on a mission to create the five ultimate fragrances. It is for men who want to see creativity, luxury, and affordability in the fragrance industry. Link in the description below. Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a reaction video to an up and coming fragrance channel that is called The Scented, which is run by someone called Yana, who is based in Canada, I believe. I've watched some of her videos. I like her style. She's got a, non, a nice no BS style to her, very straight to the point, and she does very nice, concise ways of summarizing her fragrance descriptions as well, which I really appreciate. So today I'm going to react to one of her most popular videos, Top 10 Sexiest Men's Fragrances Ever. I love reacting to these kind of videos because, you know, you guys appreciate a woman's point of view for these kind of fragrances, but I'm sure you always think to yourself, you know, what does Omar think of these uh, sexy fragrances designed to attract women? Or, you know, what, what do the homies think of, of my uh, sexy fragrances? So that's why I'm here today, guys. I'm going to react to this video. Let's get started. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. You guys, and I do mean guys specifically, have been asking me from the beginning of time, what are my favorite fragrances for men? What I think are the sexiest fragrances for men? For context, guys, most of Yana's videos are based around female perfumes. So if you wanna learn more about that side of the industry, make sure you just subscribe to her. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for her channel. On the number 10 is Bleu de Chanel Parfum. This one is my favorite of all the Bleu de Chanel's, although you can't go wrong with any, and it's only on the number 10 spot because it is so popular and it's already very well known. I love this version because it's just more rich, it's more balanced, it's sexier, it smells just richer. It's got a really great vetiver note. I think vetiver is super sexy. It's that it's got that like rooty manliness. To me, I don't get much of a vetiver note from Bleu de Chanel Parfum. Uh, the difference between Bleu de Chanel and Sauvage is that Sauvage's con concentrations actually make a difference. <laughs> well, I feel like Bleu de Chanel, there's not a huge difference between the three concentrations. Bleu de Chanel Parfum is for those people who really love the DNA, really want the best and most mature take on it, in my opinion. My, what I get the most is the sandalwood. It's got a very base heavy sandalwood notes that gives it the best longevity out of the three concentrations. I get 12 hours with it personally, with a soft to moderate projection. I think it's worth the money if you really love the DNA, but overall the Eau de Parfum is probably a good beginner entry into the brand. So on the number 10, Chanel Bleu de Chanel. On the number nine spot is a niche fragrance and it's called Thamine Regent Leather. The first time that I tried it, I was at Lucky Scent in LA and it smells incredible. So obviously you guys know I keep harking on about Thamine's Carved Oud, which is a clone of Tom Ford's Oud Wood, which is similarly priced to each other, but actually I think Carved Oud does it better nowadays. So let me check out Regent Leather because I never actually tried this. Okay, it's highly rated on Fragrantica. It's got an interesting note breakdown. It seems to be very spicy and vanilla heavy. And Malik notes, Gurjan Balsam. Gurjan Balsam is like a resinous note, which is fresh, woody, and spicy. I don't know how that smells. It sounds Middle Eastern. It sounds like an intense, dark evening scent by the sounds of things. It is one of the best leather fragrances that I've ever smelled. I love leather. I love animalic notes and especially the men's fragrance like an animalic leather that's well blended is just super sexy you know that sounds incredible actually because i always say i miss the fragrance styles that have animalic notes like uh, kuros or anteus by chanel i really do wish more modern perfumes had animalic notes <laughs> they're a bit scary but you know if you put them in minute amounts they can smell really sexy and add a lot of character to a fragrance so i i want to check this out actually i'm really glad i uh, I learned about this. Um, she's put me onto a new fragrance. That sounds interesting. Number eight is Jo Malone Oud and Bergamot, and I only have a Sephora sample. You know, that's really funny. I actually tried this fragrance yesterday. I was just actually in this, their stores, in my, one of my local stores on my high street. Um, I actually tried Oud and Bergamot. I really like this. I don't know what she's going to say about it. Well, obviously she's going to say something positive, but this is like a very clean, elegant Oud scent. And it's not like boring oud and rose and get it with a lot of fragrances. This is actually really interesting stuff. I really, uh, yeah, I'm interested in what she says. It is such a nice citrusy oud. There's not a lot of citrusy oud fragrances out there, but this one is incredible. It's really, it's an oud fragrance that you can get away with wearing when it's a little bit warmer out. Maybe not in the summer, but in the springtime for sure. And this one to me really just smells like pockets full of cash money. Yeah, I think this would be a great, as she says, all year round signature apart from the summertime. Similar to like Aqua de Parmesan, how you can wear that in a similar occasion as well. But like this, 
is an interesting oud scent. It's different to all others. Um, it does smell, I think there's a, probably just a tiny bit of real oud, but it's gonna be mainly synthetic, but the scent profile itself is sexy. Do not put it down because of that. It's actually really nice. I definitely think if you're uh, in a um, Joe Malone boutique, definitely try this one out. Number seven is Creed Millesime Imperial. This one is probably one of the only like marine aquatic-y sexy fragrances that I've ever stumbled upon. It's very, it's a very unique aquatic. It's great for the summer. Yeah, um, if you guys don't know about Millesime Imperial, I think this is Jay-Z scent actually, he wears this. It's a, a watermelon, salty, marine, musky scent. Very heavy on clean, sharp musks. Um, I don't know if it's worth the price. It's definitely a try before you buy. Uh, it's very expensive for what it is, but it's a beautiful, very pleasing summertime fragrance. There is obviously uh, clones like uh, Milestone, Club de Nuit by Armaf, but that is a little bit different. It's not exactly a, a, a good, you know, perfect 100% replica, but that might be more worth the money though. It's definitely a fragrance worth checking out though in a Creed boutique. It's fresh, it's salty, it's a little bit sweet. It's very, very um, summery, like a summery, sexy aquatic. Not in a typical way, like in no way a cool water fragrance or something like that. That's one thing I give big props to Minnesota Imperial. If you're looking for that summery marine scent that is different, it is a different kind of DNA. It's not. It's not generic at all, which I guess is what you want in a in a summertime scent in a, in a niche scent with that price tag. Number six is Dior um, Intense, and I only have a Sephora sample as well. I feel like Dior Intense is one of those fragrances that I personally don't like that much, but I still appreciate its artistry. And it's one of those fragrances you need to have a developed nose for it. It can be a little bit challenging initially, but if you like cocoa, uh, romantic sweet powdery iris fragrances you know the arm intense is a classic it's very difficult to beat this is the 2011 version i have not tried the new formulation so i don't know how it compares but this is such a different masculine scent this is very powdery and soft but very bold and confident at the same time like it's it's very soft it has a sort of lipsticky iris in there and in some ways this actually reminds me of my shalimar parfum initial but a masculine version of it. And I think it's really sexy. Of all the iris fragrances for men, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, I think if you want a fragrance for a romantic occasion, that's gonna make you stand out. Diorum Intense is still king. Definitely try it if you haven't already. Number five is Maison Margiela Replica Jazz Club. That is my absolute favorite from that whole collection. Yeah, I said the same thing in our buying guide for this for Maison Margiela. Out of all the replica fragrances, I think Jazz Club is number one. It's really masculine. It's It's got that boozy, sweet rum. Like, kind of smells like rum and coke, you know, like... Yeah, and, and uh, actually, it's quite rare that the replica fragrances from Maison Margiela are going to be masculine. I do think it's more on the masculine side. Most of the fragrances are actually on the feminine side. And uh, for some reason, almost a little bit coconutty. I don't think there's a coconut note in here. But it almost smells like a, like a coconut rum and coke and tobacco and amber. And it really does smell like a jazz club. It's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit boozy. It's super sexy. Like I think that the masterfulness of this fragrance is the fact that it is so balanced. As you said, there's so many facets to it. Fresh, spicy, boozy. It is a boozy scent that isn't annoying to wear. It's really easy to wear this in the evening time. And yeah, as the name suggests, it's got that perfect scenario of wearing it in a jazz club. Number four is Tom Ford Oud Wood. This one has been on the top of my list for ages. I love this one. You know, it's a classic, uh, but as I said previously, maybe try out Carve Dude if you're in a niche department store because uh, it might be a little bit better now. It was one of my absolute favorite Oud fragrances. I've talked about it before in my date nights video. I'll link it up at the top. It's just a really, really confident, bold, dry oud with other woody notes, with cardamom. It's very, very confident. Like a very confident man has to wear this. Yeah, honestly, I think it is definitely a confident fragrance. As she said, I completely agree. I think it's just a sexy signature to wear in general, not just for dates. Wear it at daytime, evening, it'll grab people's attention. It's still a sexy DNA, it's a classic for a reason. It's one of their top sellers for a very good reason. On the number three is Dior Bois d'Argent. This is from the private collection. This is a myrrh and iris 
dominant fragrance. That sounds very interesting. I don't think I actually tried this, but I think this was made by Francis Coke Jan, uh, the perfumer. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at the notes. Oh, never mind. It's made by Anik Minardo, who I believe made the original Hugo Boss bottles. She's also a very good perfumer. Iris, myrrh, woody notes, honey, and vanilla. That sounds incredible. I haven't tried. You know, I need to really need to have to try more of the Dior Private Line because this sounds insane. Yeah, it's got pretty good ratings as well. Like, yeah, okay. oh, people saying this could be your signature scent. This sounds really sexy, like a unique signature. There's some soft musk in there. It's a very clean smelling fragrance. It's, it is technically unisex. Now it's surprising that she's saying it's clean smelling. Just based on those notes, it seemed like it'd be quite intense and powdery and sweet. But in, it's funny because I feel like I can wear it, but I also feel like it's, like insanely sexy on a guy. If I smell this on a guy, it's just one of those, it's very inviting. It's very like, you want to linger for longer when you're around somebody that smells like Bois d'Argent. You know, that's a good point. I think a lot of guys underappreciate the these kind of scents that smell unisex, but just lean a tiny bit masculine that I feel like they add a playfulness to your scent profile and to your presentation. Think of fragrances like John Paul Gaultier's Ultramel, which I think a woman could definitely rock that, or think of Moschino's Toy Boy, or even something like La Nuit de L'Homme's Blue Electric. Some guys insist that smells quite feminine. You know, I still think it smells, you know, fairly masculine, but these are just examples of what I'm talking about. You know, so consider go for these unisex fragrances that have a playful feminine touch to them, but still masculine overall. So, so unique. It's like, the kind of fragrance that I would stop somebody and ask them what they're wearing because it's so interesting and beautiful and sexy. And then hopefully that's a very good way to start a conversation and go elsewhere with it. We're getting close to the end now. We're on the number two and number two, I just got a bottle of, I've loved this for ages, Dolce Gabbana, the one. Ooh, the Eau de Toilette. Hmm, that's a controversial choice. Although I used to rock this back in the day, so I can't talk. This has been my favorite for so many years. I don't know why I haven't got a bottle of it. Like, it is so amazing. It's like a fresh spicy, but then it turns into a tobacco with amber. It's so, so, so inviting. It's powerful and it's comforting. It's very, very comforting. I think it is just one of the safest, most romantic, well-balanced date night scents of all time. The Eau de Toilette definitely is not bad, but because its performance is so lackluster, the Eau de Parfum gets you an extra hour or two. Um, I, you know, I think, I think a lot of people really underplay the performance of the Eau de Parfum. I actually get eight hours of my skin with that fragrance. Uh, but for the Eau de Toilette, uh, yeah, from what I remember, it's like a four hours max is what you're going to get with it. Still very sexy though, so I agree with her. It opens up with, like, for me, I mostly detect the basil and the grapefruit, but then as it kind of dries down, it turns into more of a rich, ambery tobacco scent. There's a gorgeous cardamom note in here. I absolutely love cardamom in men's fragrances. I think it just, it completes it. Funnily enough, uh, our second release for our fragrance brand, uh, Mr. Romantic, which is meant to be our date night fragrance, also has cardamom in it. And funnily enough, we did a public reaction video where we put it up against Dior Homme Intense and the one Eau de Parfum and had a very interesting result in that video. So check it out if you haven't already. And yes, cardamom is one of the best notes in men's perfumery. I actually have it here in my little lab. Uh, on its own, it smells horrible. It's very earthy and dirty, but um, it's got a sweetness that just blends with so many nice woods and ambers. That's why you usually see cardamom and amber in a lot of men's perfumery. You see the cardamom in a lot of men's fragrances in general. It's very warm and seductive. A great note, always one to look out for. And number one is Paco Rabanne, one million. Oh, she had me there. She had me. I was about to get triggered. <laughs> just kidding. I don't like that one. Okay, don't go too far now, but you know, one million is still okay. Come on guys, right? It's still cool to wear the original one million, right? I love it guys. Don't be a hater. Number one is, if you guys have watched my other videos, it's an inside joke and you'll get it. Number one is actually Yves Saint Laurent L'Homme. I absolutely love this. That's quite surprising that she didn't go for La Nuit de L'Homme, she went for the original L'Homme. Now that is a sexy fragrance as well, but for me it's sexy in the daytime, whilst La Nuit de L'Homme, <laughs> funnily enough, is more sexy in the nighttime. So yeah, let's see what she says. It is, again, one of those everyday sexy fragrances. This is like, this is what I want my man to smell like all the time. This is like one of those sexy husband fragrances. This is like a, like a sexy, dependable guy. Yeah, you know what? I, I kind of get Don Draper vibes from the original Lom. 
Um, unfortunately, Lom doesn't perform, but maybe back in the day in, in its original formulations, if it did perform, someone like Don Draper from Mad Men would rock it. It's very professional, but at the same time, warm, sexy, inviting, which is very suitable for those scenes where he's uh, having multiple affairs. He's a womanizer, so it's kind of like, yeah, professional womanizer scent. I'm not sure if that's a great way to describe it, but yeah. Not a flake, like a kind of guy that, you know, you can always count on. He's a nice guy, you know, nice is sexy. Yeah, a nice guy who's also having affairs. <laughs> this is an amazing snuggly fragrance. It's perfect for Netflix and chill. I wanna smell this all the time. Like this does something to me that every other fragrance, no matter how good it is, just doesn't do like this just hits all the right spots. You know, it's annoying because I do really like the original Lom, but I just can't suggest it in general anymore because of this poor performance. Unless you're happy to just reapply it throughout your day. Like in the office at work, it's like such a great fragrance. This is sexy, powdery, ginger and amber. It's got a nice balance of fresh and spicy, just like Le Nuit de Lom as well. Uh, if he wants a, a similar vibe to something to wear to the office, maybe go for BDK's Gris Charnel, the Eau de Parfum now instead. Similar vibe, not a clone at all, it's a, you know, different, different fragrances, but it's something that can replace both the original Lom and La Nuit de Lom. It has better performance, very interesting, no breakdown, and lasts about six to eight hours, the Eau de Parfum. And if you guys are wondering, I do like La Nuit de Lom, but it is not on the top of my list. I'm sorry, this is an unpopular opinion, but I do find it a little bit more generic and it just doesn't do it for me. Lom does everything for me and La Nuit de Lom really doesn't. Oh, well, there we go. That's our question answered there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. And there you have it, guys. I really enjoyed watching that video. I like the fact that Yana is not afraid about these popular opinions. She says it as it is, what she thinks. And, you know, she doesn't include the popular fragrances like Sauvage or La Nuit de Lom or even the one Eau de Parfum. She goes for what she likes. It's similar to how a lot of people, you know, are surprised that I don't always recommend Chanel, Chanel's Allure Homme Sport over Extreme. I prefer the original Allure Homme Sport, even though the popular opinion is to go for the Extreme. Everyone's popular opinion is to go for Prada Lom. I don't really like that fragrance. Um, so I really respect when reviewers that like that and they do that. So if you guys haven't checked out Yana's channel, I will highly recommend that you do. Consider subscribing to her. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. Thank you for watching, guys. If you haven't seen them already, watch our other reaction videos to other fragrance channels. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.